Welcome back to the next episode. And I know it's been a while once again, but for good reason. Lots of things going on <laughs> in this episode. We pick up in Malsafon on the north coast of Gozo, where we say goodbye to our good mate Kyle. We hike in a beauty spot of Malta, a must see beauty spot. And finally, we plan our next moves. Sometimes I think about the good days we had, but there were bad days too. I'm Nicole. And I'm Paul. And with our motley crew of numerous children from our blended family, we sail around the Mediterranean on Savvy of London, our XP55 sailing yacht. Please tick that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and thank you for joining us on this journey. I am completely alone. So I've made myself a cup of tea. I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna do some editing. I might even sneak some work in there because I'm not allowed to work on a Saturday or a Sunday or Monday. Meanwhile, Carl and I were off for a tour of Valletta to pick up a spare alternator we'd sent to the island a few days earlier. On Savvy, we've got a 12 volt system for the engines and a 24 volt system that's basically our national grid. It runs our home. We've got about 600 amp hours of things called lithium iron batteries. They're really good. They can last a day or two without us doing any charging. But after that, our little island Savvy needs a power station to charge them all back up. Now you can do this normally by connecting to shore power in a marina or a port but we weren't going into port for the whole summer at least that's our plan so our options are we get some solar panels which we don't have wind generator don't have that either or hydro generation yep terribly badly prepared i know don't have that either so instead we have a generator but as you know the generator is not going to be operational till after the summer so we have one final backup, and that is this poor little alternator connected to the main engine. So when you're under engine going along, it just tops the batteries up. This poor little alternator had to be Savvy's power station for the next couple of months. I thought it might be a good idea to get a spare. And on the way, we got this great Uber driver. This, this year for all of, you can say all of the businesses, they try to survive. Yeah. So we just, we're just trying to survive. Uh, we do our best so to continue. So yeah. Uh, there are some, uh, there are some companies, they, they even left. They just uh, got bankrupt and they left because yeah. every country, you name it, you will find them here. At least you will find one person, at least, yeah. you know. If, if someone has a dream to meet like different people and learn different, uh, like mm. just to get to know uh, different cultures, I recommend this place. Where's uh, where would you like to go to visit yourself? Have you been? Um, I I am a traveler, so okay. I love I love to travel. Once I the last the last trip I did, um, I was in uh, I went to Paris, then we went wow. all the way down. Oh, what a great to, guy! Uh, we got the alternator back to the boat. Right. A little bit of a shenanigan, had to go there and come back and go there and come back, but got it all back to the boat just in time for a bit of lunch and then drop Kyle off time. Hey, you're back. Yep, uh, alternator all good. Uh, the guys at Strat Marine were amazing. Uh, a bit of a problem with the bill because the chap tried to bill me twice, but not because he's a bad guy, but because he just didn't kind of get what was going on. And so I showed him that I paid twice and he gave me a refund and then we left and we got back here and he didn't put the part that I paid for twice in the box. So Carl's now gone to get the part. In the meantime, Tony, who by the way has been amazing. So Tony, the outboard guy, I don't even know his surname, on Malta, who turned up the day we arrived and fixed everything that's been bad. And we just got his bill, uh, 137 euros, including parts, delivery, two trips, and a couple of hours work, unbelievable. So we're gonna give him, I think, 150 quid of cash. You should be able to pass me some cash, please, to call. All too soon, it was time to bid farewell to Kyle, our best boat buddy, and let him get back to his lovely Ellie, daughter Millie, and their soon to be born son. Here we go. No, yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 Oh, 016. Wait, do you first? Oh, no, no, no. 
Thanks for looking after me. Oh, thanks for, thanks for the food. You're wonderful. Take it easy, mate. Look after yourself. <laughs> Thank you, guys. No worries, Bye. mate. Cheers. Cheers, Carl. Thanks for everything, mate. Are you warm? Yeah, back's already dripping. It's horrible. <laughs> Don't worry, you're going to be in traffic for an hour. Oh, God. See you, mate. Take care. And now it's just us. Just the two of us. All right. Just me. I'll see. <laughs> uh, Sue, that was a fond reference if my you're mom. watching. I'm becoming Apparently, my mom. every time somebody says something, you sing words or songs with those as lyrics, and your daughter has started I doing know, the same thing. Too, right, let's get back to the boat. Yeah, I need to get cool. While Valletta was beautiful, we were both looking forward to getting out into an anchorage, fresh air and just to be free from shops, restaurants and people. So we set off for Maliha Bay, which is on the northwest side of Malta. But first, we had a beautiful sail to get there. Sabi may have still had a list of problems outstanding, but it didn't affect the way that she handled and sailed. And that's really what boat ownership and sailing is all about. Malila Bay had been recommended to us by a British Maltese couple that we met, Brian and Madeline. So thanks for the recommendation. We head over there and we certainly were not disappointed. We thought we'd go for a little dinghy ride around all these lovely rocks around the bay and just see what's here because tomorrow morning we want to go for a walk up there. It's just such a beautiful evening, the sunset, it's a lovely temperature. I'm a touch cold, but it's really pretty. It's a touch perfect for me, that is. of the last few days, all the going up masts and terrible night sleeps in all the anchorages. We were ready for an early night tonight. Good morning. We're up really late this morning actually. We've had an amazing sleep in. This anchorage first is one we've had. yeah first one we've had. We've been getting up what around six or so haven't we? So it's the first uh, lie-in that we've had and yeah. this anchorage was lovely last night. So we're gonna go for a walk. We're gonna anchor the dinghy over here somewhere. We're gonna go for a walk up to this point and just have a look around because I haven't been off the boat for a couple of days. And then we're lifting the hook and we're off to Sicily on passage. We are quite a passage actually, a couple of days. So we've got this lovely little dinghy anchorage, but these rocks will put a great big hole in this and you get that psh, oops noise. Uh, so the coal is tying us off and we have this bungee cord connected to an anchor that keeps us held off. Uh, round the rock, this one here. Yeah, just round that rock. That okay, this might have been the worst place to make land for possible. Let's go exploring. Which way? Malila Bay, or Adira as it's also known, is Malta's largest and most popularly visited beach and it's located on the north of the main island. 
It's 800 meters long and has blue flag status, which is a recognition of the quality of the water, safety and other indicators. Rather than be with the melee in the main beach, we chose to anchor right on the most northerly tip of the bay. Not much sand, but lots of rocks okay. and some beautiful hiking. Maybe we have to go up there and have a look then. Uh, worth the climb. We're going to climb up here and see where it gets us. Just weathered rock. Uh, yeah. Might go round. <laughs> I'm scared of heights. Well, to be fair, it's quite a long way down there. I've got to be honest, it doesn't look like these ones have got that much longer left in them. <laughs> Especially this one here with this rather nasty looking fissure. Um, I'd appreciate it if you didn't get any closer, actually. My nervous disposition. I need you for cooking. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's not the actual one. No. But was it white? No, it was light blue. So this was my very first car. I had a little Suzuki Sierra soft top. This is the long wheelbase though, and I had the short wheelbase. CC? Uh, 1200, 1300. Tiny. I still mm. got done speeding twice though on a motorway. <laughs> really? <laughs> Lost my license twice. I had to get it back, I had to go to court. I need my license to drive my brothers to school. Would you, do you let your, would you let this woman drive your car? <laughs> so this is the top of Malta in the clouds here, Camino. I don't know if you can see it, there's a fort, massive fort. We were anchored just the other side of that the other day. And there's a temple on Gozo over here to the left that is enormous. We haven't managed to see yet, unfortunately. We're going to head through this pass and head northwest toward the Igadi Islands to the west of Sicily. They're about a day and a half in that direction. So I'm in trouble, um, and rightly so, because when we arrived here, I was in such a rush to start fixing things on the boat that I forgot to put sunscreen on on day one, and I didn't even realise it was happening. But apparently my back looks bad. Yeah, look at this, there's just look in the sun there. It's just all these little blisters and we've been trying not to let them pop because I don't want his whole back to risk infection actually. But last season we were able to we were in Australia in February and then every month we came sailing and we gradually built up our natural sun defense in our skin. This season we had a little bit of sun at home but mainly we've just come straight into the sun and we really have found that our skin hasn't adapted very well and we're both, if we're not careful, getting burnt really easily. So I just think that Paul We do is, have factor 50 on every day, I just that day I forgot. But you should be wearing, we both should be wearing t-shirts really. Yeah, it's just so warm. Yeah, it is warm. But that horrible itchiness when your skin all peels is not going to be very pleasant. Uh, if I'm honest, we got a little bit lost 
there's lots of fissures and you walk along a path and then all of a sudden there's a two meter gap and a 50, 60 foot drop. Sorry about mixing the uh, imperial and metric there. So we are now, we think, on our way back to the tender and it's good because we're walking through gum trees. Through gum trees and we can smell wild rosemary and there are lots of these beautiful figs. But most importantly, we didn't bring any water with us because it was only a short walk. So we've just been discovering the freeze. Again, three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, plenty of that here. Three days without water. I reckon we could get to water within three days. Salinated. Salinated water, so that would require an enema, which is a delightful conversation on a Sunday morning. That we've just had. That we've just had. We won't bore you with that one. And then we've got the three weeks without food. Uh, although I've got to be honest with you, anyone who's met Nicole and seen her without food for three hours would object to that as a concept. I certainly object. <laughs> when was the last time you ate? Uh, dinner last night. Uh oh. I've got about three minutes. If you don't hear from me. We did finally make it back to the boat and I did get my breakfast, much needed breakfast. Thank you for watching, I hope it was worth the wait and thank you for all our new subscribers recently who discovered us thanks to Sailing Fair Isle. Please join us in the next episode where we take a passage to the Agadi Islands which I'd never even heard about before we decided to go there and we introduce you to the stunning island that we can't pronounce even to this day. Savage <laughs> See you then.